us pray. Mysterious creator, we unexpectedly find you in the most common but heartfelt places. The songs of our youth, the echo of pop music refrains, the stories from our poets. We ask that you keep revealing your beauty, keep us mining for our hearts of gold, and when times get tough and friends just can't be found, be our bridge over troubled water. Fill our hearts with joy as we trust in your truth and eternal goodness. All this we humbly ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to live, I want to give, I've been a miner for a heart of gold. It's these expressions I never give that keep me searching for a heart of gold, and I'm getting old. Keep me searching for a heart of gold And I'm getting old I've been to Hollywood I've been to Redwood I've crossed the ocean for a heart of gold I've been in my mind It's such a fine line That keeps me searching for a heart of gold And I'm getting old That keeps me searching for a heart of gold I'm getting old That keeps me searching for a heart of gold I'm getting old That keeps me searching for a heart of gold I'm getting old Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, starting in verse 25. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? He responded, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But the legal expert wanted to prove that he was right. So he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man went down to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Jericho. He encountered thieves who stripped him naked, beat him up, and left him near death. Now it just so happened that a priest was always going down the same road. When he saw the injured man, he crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. Likewise, a Levite came by that spot, saw the injured man, and crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. A Samaritan, who was on a journey, came to where the man was. But when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan went to him and bandaged his wounds, tending them with oil and wine. Then he placed the wounded man in his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took full, two full days' worth of wages and gave them to the innkeeper. He said, take care of him, and when I return, I will pay you back for any additional costs. What do you think? Which one of these three was a neighbor to the man who encountered thieves? Then the legal expert says, 
the one who demonstrated mercy towards him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. So today we're starting a, a new sermon series that we're calling That 70s Soundtrack. We're going to use um, uh, folk songs, uh, rock songs, uh, funk song in there from the 70s and use that as our secondary store source for preaching, kind of like we did with um, our Disney Plus Gospel series. And it's just a way to do something fun and um, to try and glean a different perspective uh, on the scriptures. So I'm a big believer that any type of music and art, uh, visual arts or creative spaces can uh, raise our consciousness. And boy, what I mean by that is art speaks to us on a different level, on a deeper level. It can speak to our existential situations or um, our collective experiences as human beings, that there's some things that we can put in a song or a piece of artwork Uh, words that we wouldn't be able to speak otherwise. And I think it's also true that these words and this raising of consciousness that I'm talking about can help us understand more about Scripture and Jesus, even if um, the song isn't necessarily a spiritual song. But for me, Heart of Gold, even though it's not necessarily a Christian song, it's certainly a spiritual song that speaks to our collective experience as human beings. But before I get into that, uh, what I want to do is acknowledge that we had an incredible loss in our church family this week. Um, Adam Driscoll uh, passed away on Monday. And if you don't know Adam, he was a father of a really active family here at Broadway. He was a member of our finance team and uh, our church council. He was instrumental in getting our Kids & Co., that partnership with the school district, up and going. And ever since I came to Broadway, I have um, become friends with Adam, and uh, he and his family have supported us as a family as we have um, moved to Council Bluffs. And so personally, it's a hard loss for me. It's a hard loss certainly for his family and our church family. And so... If you're feeling grief, if this bubbles up feelings, if um, you don't know how to handle something like this, reach out to your pastors, and uh, we will try our best to help you with that, and we'll get through this together as a church family. So Adam, like I said, was instrumental in the talks with Kids & Co., but I remember when we first came to Broadway, and he pretty much cornered me and gave me all of the, his ideas and desire to see the children's ministry grow. He had a particular heart um, for seeing that aspect of our church grow and what we could do um, to help facilitate that. And um, everything seemed to revolve around the love of kids, his coaching and um, his, certainly his own family, but the love for kids was not Um, was not solely meant for just his kids, but all of the kids of our community. And I think, for me, Adam was a person searching, mining for a heart of gold. He's the person that Neil Young is um, singing about. And because I truly believe that Neil Young was singing about all of us. We're all just walking through this life, mining for a heart of gold, trying to figure out what we're doing and trying to do our best. Um, Luckily, we have a church family. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ that shows us the way. Um, And, you know, even in our darkest valleys, um, we're able to be lifted up with the promises that Jesus left us with. In the scripture reading today, it's this familiar reading of the Good Samaritan. And... I pointed out last week we talked about these disagreements that Jesus is having with uh, the legal experts, I think as it said in the CEB version, and the NRSV it calls them lawyers. And lawyers, like I said last week, isn't um, necessarily the same thing as we have today in the in legal profession. 
but rather they're the in, interpreters of the law of Moses and the and interpreters of Scripture. And so even though our Scripture today comes from a totally different part of the Gospels than our um, uh, our scripture last week, you see that it's the same conversation that's happening over and over. That the legal ex- experts, the lawyers, think they have it figured out. And Jesus says, you might have a part of it figured out, but, um, you know, we need to think about the whole picture. And it's hard on a daily basis to keep that in mind, even though when it's so simple, our two greatest commandments are to love the Lord your God to love your neighbors as yourself. So incredibly simple. And not, the golden rule is not exclusive to Christianity. It is one of those things that we can find in um, most, if not all, faith traditions. And we as human beings can intuit that. We know um, that these things are the ways to guide our life. And yet, as we see in the scripture, it's not the easiest thing to live out on a daily basis. So we have these three characters, and I'm going to focus on the the Levite, the priest, who is coming back from Jerusalem, going to Jericho. Now, Jericho was a wealthy city. Um, It was known for being such. And there's there was a a, the path between Jerusalem and Jericho was about a 17 or 18 mile journey. And it was along cliffs um, or along um, a ridge. So I imagine some of the the streets that I walk or jog in in Council Bluffs would be similar. Although, you know, obviously in Israel it's more desert and we have more foliage than they do, but it's the same type of idea. And there was these thieves that were always hiding out in the hills. Because they knew Jericho was a wealthy city. They knew that anybody from traveling, that would be traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, um, were wealthy and most likely had resources on them that could be um, taken from them. And so we see, um, we have this Levite who was traveling um, from Jerusalem back home, most likely. It doesn't say that, but um, commentators suggest that he is probably had been at the temple um, working, you know, taking care of his professional religious obligations, and he was on his way home, walking home, on a road that was not particularly safe. And he stumbles upon this man who was basically beaten and left for dead. Now, the reason he he crosses on the other side of the road to avoid um, this person who was left for dead, and uh, commentators suggest that the reason that he was probably avoiding this person is to avoid um, ritual defilement. In order to be a priest, in order to work in the temple, to enter the temple complex, you had to be ritually clean. And so even though that this priest had finished whatever daily duties he had at the temple, he was walking home from work, he still painstakingly avoids this person on the road for the sake of um, ritual cleanliness. And it's just an example to me of, you know, this priest, he was in a religious profession. He was, as we all are, a miner for the heart of gold. I, I imagine this person to be trying his best. He was um, doing what he thought he needed to do to stay in line with that being a priest and doing what he needed to do for his people in the temple. And yet we have these things that get in our way that keep us from the very two commandments that Jesus says are take precedence over every, everything else, to love your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the Samaritans um, were a racially contested or had a, raci- a, a racially tenuous relationship with the Jewish people, which I've talked about before. And to think that the Samaritan is the one that get it, that gets it, would be shocking to the people that Jesus are talking to, because the Samaritans are the lowliest of the low. Um, they are not only are they religious and cultural rivals, but they are not supposed to get it just purely based on who they are. 
And yet, this Samaritan not only helps the person on the road, but he helps him um, for the next days. He says, any expenses to the innkeeper that you might incur, I'll pay it back. It's not just this um, pick you up and get you back on your feet, but it's, it's more than that. It's deeper than that. It's, a, it's not just a superficial love and care to say, um, I'm going to get you back on your feet and send you on your way. Rather, it's um, I'm going to love you, and I'm going to make sure that you are taken care of. So my question that I want to offer you today is, why, why do you come to church? Why are you tuning in today? Um, why are you a member at Broadway? Why are you, if you're not a member, participating in our ministries? Um, and I think, wh- why, what is the purpose of faith? And the, you can have a lot of answers for that. To have a supportive family, to, um, to fill your cup spiritually, to be connected to God. But I think one of the reasons for all of us, is that we're mining for a heart of gold, that we're doing the best we can, that we're going to fail just like that priest. We're not going to get it right. But hopefully, we're trying our best. We know what's put before us, to love God, to love each other. But it's not the easiest thing. Sometimes our own ambitions, sometimes our own care of ourselves get in the way. But that's what we're here for, to learn how to do it better and to have a faith community that will support us in our lowest points of our lives. When we think we got it right to say, um, to offer constructive feedback, to say maybe you haven't looked at it and that from this different perspective. So in all these ways, we support each other and we look to the example of Jesus Christ. The person who offers us that heart of gold. The person who says right in this scripture reading what the heart of gold is. Before he even gets into this story about the Good Samaritan, he says it outright. That the heart of gold is loving the Lord your God and loving the neighbors as yourself. The good news, friends, that I want to leave you with today is that we do have this church. We do have a Savior in Jesus Christ. We have a community that will stand with us. We have scripture that that tells us the story of Jesus, that shows us the example that we can study and we can live by on an everyday basis. Not only that, but we have Jesus, who is with here with us today, that walks beside us every day to lift us up, to give us the encouragement that we need. It's not just a um, something that we read about in a book, by which I mean the Bible. We don't just study this, and all of a sudden we have this knowledge, and we live a different way. Rather, Jesus is an active force in our lives that makes us better people. That's what grace is. And We can't be genuine miners for the heart of gold, I believe, without Jesus. Whether we acknowledge that or not, Jesus is the one that is forging this path, that is pushing us forward, that is filling us with the Holy Spirit um, in our ever-searching and our ever-mining for the heart of gold. And that, my friends, is a reason to give thanks for this church, to give thanks for Jesus Christ.